Bull Carrier is about the city, yeah. and it sells it out way faster.
What up? Let's get weird. It's your boy, Tommy G, or G here. Jesus, I'm like new to this, Evan. I don't even know what the fuck to do. It's the first show. I messed up the fucking intro. It's your boy, Tommy G here, live with Stay Cash in the first episode. I'm here with two of the biggest retards I know and Evan Han. Evan, I want to introduce you first. You're my boy. You're the producer of this show. This is kind of beta, right? We were supposed to test this first, but I fucked it up. So tell me what I need to do to make sure that I don't fuck this up. <clears throat> Hold on, hold on. Someone's got the sound on. We're good? All right, we're good. So what I want to do on this show here, I want to introduce my two boys who are with me right now. Uh, Night Ghost coming live from the car in the shades. Uh, so no one knows who he is. Uh, what's up, Ghost? What's well, on, brother? Nice to be live for once. See that, Bill? Look at him bringing the energy. That's actually energy for Night Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, so uh, Night Ghost likes to stay anonymous, which is why his name is Night Ghost, because he sees all the trolling that goes on and he's got a family. He's got a real life that he wants to wants to stay from. He thinks by putting glasses and a hat on that we don't know who the fuck he is. When so, he came on, I had no idea who it was. He's like Superman. I mean, it's <laughs> like Clark Kent. Clark Kent. I had no clue who it was. So he took your glasses <laughs> off in the hat. He's like, Bill, what's up? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> So the anonymous night ghost who thinks he has glasses and he stays in the shadows and yeah. better odds, New Jersey. So follow night ghost on Twitter at what is it? Just at night ghost now or night ghost, night NHL? ghost NHL. at night ghost NHL. You can follow me at Tommy G returns on Twitter and at Tommy G returns Two on Instagram because I've been deleted 47 times. I'm assuming it'll be Tommy G returns seven. If you're watching this in three weeks, Evan, what's your what's your Twitter and Instagram handles? They can't hear you or they can't hear us. Oh, it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys. <laughs> so you... Yeah, Evan underscore hand. So in the chat, tell me who you can hear. You, nope. can, he you can hear me. You can hear Bill. You can hear Ghost, correct, in the chat? So the production guy who's in charge of all the tech is the one guy you can't fucking hear. Great, great start. So can't hear E, can't hear E, can't hear E. Why I can't even log in and you can hear me, so. I mean, Maybe Bill fucking figured this that. out. Every fucking person should be able to figure it out. Just Evan. Evan, how's that possible? That's good. So I should probably stop kicking to you and asking you questions, right, since they can't hear you? All right. <laughs> so we'll see, if, we'll see if the tech guy can figure out his own tech. Uh, don't worry. Evan, Evan will uh, try and figure that out. And then the biggest fucking Neanderthal of the crew uh, Mr. Sir William Rupp. Those of you who don't know Bill will get to know Bill. Uh, pretty much everything Bill says is dangerous to our company's future. Um, he's a crazy person. You might see him tweeting on Twitter uh, at every female handicapper in the industry, asking him to see their betting slips. You might see him calling me an anti-vaxxer uh, because he is uh, vaccinated and has a job, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Bill is probably my biggest nemesis. He thinks No Mercy is an echo chamber, and he wanted to make sure he was on this, which he's going to be because he's our lead handicapper. Uh, he's going to be on here basically to just try and shit on me and just go against everything I say, right, Bill? Pretty much. You got it in a nutshell. So what do you think of No Mercy? Oh, it's awful. It's uh, awful. <laughs> One-sided, it's Hitler, uh, everybody's brainwashed. Um, so you said you don't watch it, Bill. How do you know so much well, about I mean, it? I, because when he, I'm at his house and he's doing those intros, I hear it all the time. Stuff I hear is complete garbage. And he, brings <laughs> it up, he, he brings it up to me at midnight every night to get me pissed off. <laughs> no, he does that shit on purpose. Yeah. So, so what we do, you guys know the site. The site is 4deepbets.com, the number 4deepbets.com. Me, Ghost, Trevor, Hoffman... Uh, I'm not even going to roll through the names. Rackets, the whole crew uh, is in there pretty much every night sweating the games with the subscribers. Uh, me and Bill basically fight most of the night. Uh, then it turns into, like, just nonsense from midnight on. But uh, if you guys want, get over to 4deepbets.com, number 4deepbets.com. Use the code VIP20, and you get 20% off the whole entire site. I think we start there. I'm going to bring Healy on in, like, five minutes. So before we get to Healy... Let's talk about yesterday, last night, Thursday night football game. We absolutely skull-fucked the game. I was going through Twitter, 
and I saw, and Ghost and Bill, if you guys want to chime in with this, I was looking through Twitter, and everyone's like, oh, Tampa didn't cover the first half. Tampa didn't cover the game. Okay. No. <coughs> they Everybody were all... had Tampa first half. Everyone had Tampa game. And I told you that went to nine and a half. I got nervous. Yeah, and we had a teaser, right? We had our teaser with Tampa minus two under 60. So we actually pushed both, I think. Yeah. I think both of those pushed. So that was just a wash on FanDuel and other sites. But uh, we fucking destroyed it last night. And this is the difference between us and these other sites. What we're going to do on this show, we're going to bring Healy on in a few minutes. The show will normally be 30 minutes to an hour. This one may be a little bit longer. It may flirt with the hour mark. But we're not going to go over an hour on this show. We'll also have our wonderful producer, Evan, kind of break it up in segments so we could have like a minute mark and show you guys what minute we started talking about bets. If you want, and we started talking about college football. So if you don't want to hear the banter and the Cam Newton talk, you can just go right to that. Let me read you a few of the plus money bets that we had on our site last night. Gronk, two touchdowns, which was on Rupp and Rackets in the morning. Would you like to plug your show, Bill? Uh, up and rackets in the morning, Monday through Friday, five to five thirty p.m. Yeah, that's in the Discord. We'll be a test show, so check it out uh, in the Discord. Uh, hopefully, we'll be on YouTube and everything soon, also. So. Yeah. So for right now, that's in the Discord at five thirty. Uh, that goes from five thirty to six, and then Ghost, you do a DFS show with the guys. It's you, Trevor, Text, Healy, and then myself. You want to plug that real quick on the Discord? Yeah, so every day, Monday through Saturday, we do a, a live breakdown of our articles, um, usually the four or five of us throughout the week. We'll have two on just about at all times. We break down the slate, we bounce ideas off each other, and then we hang out and chat for the unused time until lock to help you with the rest of the builds. So. Okay, cool. And I just saw someone say there's an echo. Uh, yeah, it's award-winning Rep and Racket show. Give me a one if you guys are hearing an echo. It might have, have, I might, it might have been me. Might okay, have been me. We're, we're good. I haven't just said it. Working. All right. So he's trying to get his mic working. That's all it was. But give me a one if you guys hear us okay. I know we're on a slight delay. Uh, so, yeah. So we have 5.30 Rupp and Rackets in the morning, which doesn't take place in the morning because they're fucking idiots and they named the show wrong. So that's at 5.30 p.m. 6 o'clock starts the DFS show. We run that pretty much 6 to 6.30 behind the paywall. This is for the subscribers. And then we have our sweat shows at night. And we have other night stuff that we'll talk about here, too. So let me read some of these plays, as I just said from yesterday. If you're not signed up here, you're a fucking idiot. I'm just going to tell you that right now. If you have not signed up at 4deepbets.com, you're a fucking idiot. Like, we were talking about this, guys, in the chat last night, saying that I actually feel bad for people who aren't signed up. Correct? Yeah. Everybody, from what I heard last night, and I was on the Twitter sphere. Um, everybody in the Twitter sphere. Yeah, they, we saw you on the Twitter sphere last We time. always see you on the fucking Twitter yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody got killed. Yeah. So they all had the same play. Halftime, full-time, lost. And the under. Halftime, full-time, under, lost. They all got killed. And the people who won, won like a unit, right? Yeah. Like, oh, we had the over. Or, oh, we took the points. Uh, let me give you a couple of the plays. Gronk, two touchdowns. This is Joey Rackets, who's not with us right now. He'll be on this show a lot. He's our two-touchdown specialist. So Joey Rackets puts out Gronk two touchdowns. He became our two-touchdown specialist because he hit, like, three of his first five last year. And he always does, like, plus 2,500. So Gronk for plus 2,500 two touchdowns. We hit that. Godwin, 100 yards. And Schultz, 40 yards. Same game parlay, plus 2,500. We hit that. Godwin first touchdown, plus 1,000. We hit that. Godwin 100 yards in the Bucks to win, plus 500. Hit that. Godwin, 75 in the Bucks to win, plus 250. Hit that. Hoffman flies in with his same gay parlay. He's a same gay parlay expert. Uh, Bucks under 60 and a half. Godwin over 57 and a half. Schultz over 18 and a half, plus 659. Hit that. And then Brady, three touchdowns. Bucks to win, plus 200. Hit that. Bill, I think you swept your bets yesterday, right? Yeah, Schultz over 17 and a half. Um, Dak over 12 and a half rushing yards. Both teams to score a touchdown in each half. And what we specialize in, guys, is the live betting. Um, we killed the live bet Schultz over 39 and a half yards, which we had already hit at 17 and a half. We rebet it at uh, 39 and a half, and we hit that also. Um, like we were telling yesterday, the live betting we're going to kill this year. So jump in the live bet. They're bonus bets. Uh, we kill them. Uh, Ghost had one play also, and it hit. Ghost. I have one play. I'm not much of a big uh, volume NFL play. I like to pick the one prop or one play I like. We played for net over receiving yards, 11 and a half for three units, and we cashed that by, what, the end of the third, early fourth? 
Mm-hmm. Was another cash for that. We also uh, hit our monkey knife fight prop. Uh, we yeah, got it. Tell, tell them what the code is for monkey knife fight today. Go, go sign up so there. Too. I go to monkey knife fight. You can go in our um, on our site and click on the link and use four deep 100 as the promo code. You'll get a hundred percent deposit for up to a hundred dollars. So you deposit a hundred, you get a free hundred. Um, I mean, what's better than that? It's, uh, it's so easy. We've been killing prop. that site. All yeah. It, it's basically uh, betting on individual players' performance in a DFS format. Whoa, Night Ghost just went full Night Superman. Ghost just went yeah, I, had a, I had a yawn. I didn't want everyone to see <laughs> <laughs> He didn't want to yawn, Bill, because they might be able to see his teeth and be able to do a dental record search to see who he is. Fucking weirdo. Uh, how did it go red, Ghost? What do you have? That was my finger. That your finger's oh, red? Wow. Yeah. Wow, look at you, you fucking I weirdo. I thought he put up like a red piece of paper. So finger popping. Yeah, it's finger popping someone's asshole. So, uh, so yeah, Monkey Knife Fight's fantastic. We do, we've do we been killing it. Bill Rupp actually basically is the head of Monkey Knife Fight along with Luke Hoffman. And Rupp, we've been killing the baseball home run props, and we just destroy the football ones. So we basically had Antonio Brown, Amari Cooper, and Mike Evans over one and a half touchdowns was the bet. And Antonio Brown, and they, they, they hit that easy. I think uh, yeah. Brown and Cooper hit it yeah, by yeah, themselves. We, yeah, that was easy. So, so that was easy. Yeah. Double, double your money on that. Yep. So uh, I want to bring on Healy right now. Then we'll, we'll bring Healy on because he's got a hard stop. He's got a business meeting in a few minutes. So, Evan, if you want to go bring Healy on, and then we will go out there and uh, move forward. Here he is. Oh, look at this motherfucker. What's going on, boys? How you doing? What's up? Oh, yes. Not too much. Um, so much. So much Yankee apparel and love in this uh, chat here today. Is, well, is, is, Healy coming, is Healy coming live from in jail? <laughs> is that an Al Qaeda beheading site? Yeah, are, are, are you are you being held hostage by the Taliban, Healy? Bill wants to know. Can't confirm or deny. Find out on the next No Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I Healy. Won't, I won't be listening, but Bill ahead. will be listening. I think Bill secretly listens to it. So Healy, you've had yourself quite a little couple weeks uh, or month, uh, not only having the luxury of joining the great Tommy G, Bill Rupp, Night Ghost, Evan, and the rest of the crew here at 4D Bets. But um, I think you've made almost a quarter million dollars in the last month in DFS. So would you like to run down your most recent DFS run and how it's been? Yeah, the last few weeks of uh, MLB DFS have been have been really good. Um, you know, I had a couple nice takedowns over the course of that time, a couple unfortunate second and third place finishes where – you know, we know in today's landscape of DFS, uh, a lot of these contests are extremely top heavy. And while second and third is, you know, a, a really good return, um, nothing beats kind of taking down some of the big tournaments. So recently, you know, had a big, uh, six figure hundred thousand dollar takedown as well as a couple, uh, you know, smaller takedowns, 30,000, 50,000, uh, a couple $20,000 second place finishes. So, Things are going really well heading into the final month of regular season baseball and you know, really excited to to bring my content over here for the subscribers at 4 Deep, um, as well as looking ahead to the NFL and kind of kicking that off tonight as far as the NFL main slate content goes. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And what we're doing, uh, Healy's doing a great job with the DFS content. He's obviously, he's basically running our DFS side, right? He's one of the best DFS players in the industry. Uh, you guys all know who he is, just constantly six-figure takedowns. I promised you guys when we hired him that you would see multiple six-figure takedowns before the end of the year, and he hit for 100,000 four days later. So I followed through with my word. I don't need to be the best person at anything here. I'm just the best hirer of people. So uh, my job is to be the best GM. I don't need to be the talent. I got fucking idiots like these guys around me, and then I don't need to be that good. Uh, there's Bobby trying to call me as I'm on air. Good job, Bob's Lessons. But, uh, Healy, so let's go into a little baseball. I know you got a hard stop in like five minutes. So we'll get to the football in a minute. We're going to go through some futures. We're going to go through some NFL bets for this weekend. We're going to go through some college football bets, too. But let's do baseball while we got you here, Healy. And then if there's any other football stuff you want to touch on, uh, me and you are doing a show tonight for the subscribers behind the paywall for the DFS package. The DFS package is dirt cheap right now, guys. You get everything in it plus the optimizers for 197 plus 20% off using VIP 20. So you're basically getting it for like 150 bucks for the rest of the year. All tools, all optimizers, all plays, all shows. And me and Healy are kicking off the NFL content tonight with our DFS show at 8 p.m. Eastern. 
uh, in the Discord or on the live stream. But Haley, give me give me a rundown of what you're looking at from a DFS perspective or betting perspective for baseball today. Anything that's jumping out at you? Yeah, so I have one DFS play that I'll, I'll highlight here, and then I also have, I'll, I'll leave folks with a NFL prop for the weekend that that I really really like. Um, so the DFS play tonight in the MLB is Salvador Perez. He's facing off with Griffin Jacks, a young right-handed pitcher for the Twins, who in the split against right-handed hitters is allowing a 53% fly ball rate, 41% hard hit rate. He's a big slider guy, throws over 40% of his pitches to right-handed batters or sliders. Salvador Perez profiles extremely well against that pitch mix in the split. A 363 expected Wova, 260 ISO. I really like Salvador Perez as an MLB DFS play tonight. And then just one uh, NFL prop that, that I'm really high on. I don't know, all you Yankee fans, are you guys Giants, Jets? What, what's the I'm fandom here? Jets, baby. Go yeah. Jets. I'm Jets, too. Okay. So you're Falcon. Hold on. You're Falcons, right, Bill? Yep. And Ghost? I'm a Jet fan. Dude, we have three Jet fans on one show. That's never happened. Let's go. 60% Jet fans and, and what, 80% when he, when uh, Haley logs off. This is amazing. Yeah. So uh, so I have a Jet play for for player prop tonight. I newly acquired Corey Davis. Yeah. Um, reception prop, extremely too low at drafting. Sitting at three and a half receptions. Um, you know, this team, I think this is going to be a good, good game from a uh, – you know, offensive production standpoint on both sides of the ball. The Jets still don't really know who's going to take snaps at running back. Looks like they're going to rotate three, four guys throughout there. Crowder, you know, dealing with some COVID, killing Cole out with a knee. Davis is like the only sure thing in this offense, and he's going to get peppered with targets just like we saw in the the small clips we saw of him in the preseason. He has a very winnable matchup with a rookie cornerback, uh, J.C. Horn. So I, I think this is a uh, just a smash spot for Corey Davis to go over that three and a half. Wouldn't it be surprised if that's he hits that over in the first half? Ghost and Bill. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, I'm going to plug right now, guys. Corey Davis is a guy I, I've drafted big as a my number three wide receiver in fantasy. We have a great seasonal fantasy product that you get access to if you sign up for the VIP package or the DFS package, the promo package. You'll have access to that. We'll be in there helping you. I love the Corey Davis call. I'm very big on him this season. Um, from what I remember, uh, Crowder's out as well this week, so that should um, give him an even bigger share of targets. So I'm going to be all over, the, all over that with you, Healy. Yeah, I love it, Bill. Uh, yeah, I like, I like the yardage. I was looking for receptions for him um, and everything. I don't see it. I only see yards. Uh, but, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I, I love Corey Davis this year. And I'll kick back to you, Brian. I, I'm actually obsessed with him. Uh, I have him in every single league I was in. I drafted him a round or two early in every single league I was in just to make sure I got him. And I think we're all on the same page. Uh, probably I see uh, Evan nodding too. So it seems like he's in agreement with it also. Any of us that are Jet fans know that there's targets to be had there. And I'm higher on Zach Wilson than I am on everyone. No one's fucking talked about him at all. It's all Lawrence Fields, uh, uh, Mac Jones. Tony I still love my boy Donald. I, I mean, him. yeah. Tony, Tony Romo said that Zach Wilson could be a top five QB within the next five years. I, I, I think he's a pro bowler in three. I think he's that good. I think he's the most talented quarterback to come out of this draft. I think Mac Jones is in the best situation. That's why I like him a lot this year. But I think Zach Wilson is a generational talent that we just stole mini Russell Wilson. And people will start realizing that soon. We actually have a pretty decent line, too. Our line's not that bad. So I don't think it's going to be a terrible situation for him. But uh, I love Corey Davis Healy. I love that play. Three and a half receptions is, is a definite go. Yeah, and I'm just waiting for other books. I, you know, as Bill said, I'm sure he's been kind of scouring. DraftKings is the only book I found uh, reception prop on, on Corey Davis so far. So I'm going to continue to, to monitor all the books over the you know, next several hours and days leading up to Sunday to see if I can get down even more at other books if it opens at three and a half. Yeah, and Corey Davis is an underrated player. I don't I don't understand why he was going so low. I mean, dude, if I told you that, you know, Corey Davis was top 20 in receiving yards last year in the NFL in a much more crowded situation, and he only played 14 games. He actually missed two games, and he was the 20th leading wide receiver in the NFL. I don't know why people are sleeping on him. I think he could end up being a top 15 uh, reception guy in a league this year. 
So love that. And this is when you got to catch these things early. Bill, we talk about it all the time. We kill the first month every time. We started with it last night, up like 40 units on half unit and one unit plays. But we killed the beginning of the season. Yeah, there was a lot of wrong props last night, and we were ahead of we were ahead of all of them. Yeah, uh, and I think we're going to do the same thing on Sunday. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. I would say max it, uh, Erod. I see you in the chat. Uh, up to four and a half. It'll probably keep moving up. We do move the lines, guys. I know people laugh about that, but any of us, any of them who are our subscribers, see uh, when we put stuff out, the lines move immediately. Uh, Healy, anything else you like for today, tomorrow, going into this season, a future, a prop, anything? No, I think that's it for today. We'll, we'll obviously have plenty more posted on the site leading into the weekend. And, you know, tonight from a DFS perspective, um, you know, look forward to interacting with more and more subscribers over the coming weeks. Uh, yeah. Just so we know, Corey Davis just moved to four and a half receptions on draft kicks. Yeah, there you go. See how quick? <laughs> yeah, people want to know what his yardage is, too. Uh, I don't know if they posted his yards yet, did they? 50, 51 and a half. Like. I like the receptions more. Um, but what do you think of the yardage, Shaley? You still like 51 and a half as like a big play? Yeah, I still like that. Uh, I would even play the receptions. If you can get that plus money, I would even play it uh, at five and a half in this situation. If you can get the, the right number on the plus side. I haven't projected for a little over six receptions in, in this game, so I'm comfortable there. Yeah, yeah. Right now they're showing four and a half plus 125. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, we're not going to take it if we thought he was going to catch four, right? But also, guys, a lot of the other sites don't have those props out yet. So you might see it pop up at other books uh, at three and a half if you want to hold off on it, if it's already jumped to four and a half. Uh, all right, Healy, I will catch you tonight, 8 p.m. Me and Healy will be on the show going through our DFS breakdowns, and then we'll both have articles out for tomorrow on the site with our full breakdowns. I'll have my G-spot. Healy will have his normal tiers, and uh, we'll crush it there. So go win another 50, 100,000 for us tonight so I can tweet about it, Healy. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Later. Talk later. Later. See you later. If, if you need help in that ISIS chamber, chamber let us know. Okay. <laughs> quick, if you want to let uh, subscribers know, I have schedules posted on the website now. You can see who's going to be doing content, what days of the week, what times the shows will be out. We have those now posted for, for subs to access. Yeah. Uh, Truth said A.J. Brown is better than Davis. Well, I mean... I, That's true. I, I don't think anyone's arguing that truth. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got yeah. John o. Smith to compete with and Matt yeah. Jones throwing to him. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we all know that. But, yes, I love that. Um, another prop that I love for this weekend while we're on the props, and keep in mind, we're going to give a lot of these away on the site. We, I haven't even gone into my prop analysis for Sunday. I spent all yesterday digging into Thursday night's games. So we're going to give you a few plays every show we have here, but it will basically be one or two of our favorites. And then those plus 2,500s and plus 1,000s that we hit five of last night, uh, those will probably be just for the subscribers in the show because we just don't do that research till then. So, you know, most of my research is done some Saturday night into Sunday morning for the Sunday games. Yeah, I want to see lineup. Me writing it on the whiteboard. Yeah, exactly. We do, a, we do a little whiteboard game, me and Bill, the night before. But, uh, Bill, is there a specific prop that you like or a bet you like for this weekend? 100%. I'm going back to the well with my man, Koo. Oh. Um, so it's, they won't put up his points until Sunday, maybe Saturday night or Sunday. But right now, MGM has over one and a half field goals, minus 150. Um, I love it. Falcons are horrible in the red zone every single year. Um, so you're going to be looking. Matt Ryan, well, as soon as Matt Ryan's still there, you've got to go with the crew over one and a half field goals. Uh, DraftKings has it at two and a half field goals, minus 196. So MGM at one and a half, minus 150 right now is a steal. Yeah. Uh, Bill, tell them about what happened with Koo last year. Uh, he's probably the best kicker that no one knows. Yeah. Nobody knows who the guy is. He came out of nowhere. Uh, he makes every field goal. We bet him every week last week starting off. We're like, because I'm a Falcons fan, so it drew attention to Koo. I'm like, Let's bet this guy to kick field goals because the Falcons are so bad inside the red zone. Every week we kept doubling, hitting it, hitting it. Got a joke in the chat. We're betting Koo. We're betting Koo. Thousands of dollars were won on this guy. I want to get the guy on the show. Yeah, we can, too. I think we find, can. Find his cleats. You'll get them on. <laughs> <laughs> we well, probably have more followers than him. I don't think anyone knows who the fuck he is. But Ku has become a cult hero in the 4D best chat. Let me read you his field goals made for, like, the first fucking 10 weeks last year. And it was over one and a half every week, keep in mind. Okay? Two, four, two, three, four, zero. Four, two, three, five, three. You get the point? 
So, I mean, literally, just we just rode it every week. Uh, and the dude doesn't miss. He was 37 for 39 last year. So whenever you're betting kicker props, you want to make sure that you're going to have opportunity one, but then that they don't zerline them and fucking shank them left from the fucking 30-yard field goals. So uh, Koo is a, a love child of ours. We love him, and we love his total points. And they're going to put his points up at six and a half, seven and a half. So six and a half or seven and a half. You know the Falcons are going to score two or three touchdowns in that game. Yeah, we love it. So Koo is a big one for us. Go, so what are we saying? He's one of your guys. He's not one of mine. Why not? Why not? You hate Asians? <laughs> yeah. I hate people that cost me 10 grand on one kick. Wow, what, what was that? I, I Two or three years ago, his last stint with the Chargers, game-winning drive, down by two, and needed the Chargers to win. 30-yard field goal, he comes out, shanks it left. Cost well, that's why he was a – that's why he's a different guy. So when, he, when yep. the Falcons picked him up, he was a backup. Yeah. Their original kicker got hurt. He came in, and he didn't miss a field goal. He took over the job. He's been amazing ever since. Kickers yeah. are weird. We're, they're, it's one year, one year to the next. So, hopefully, he stays hot again, and we'll ride him. If not, you know, we'll dump him. But I love it. I love it. Uh, we're going to keep playing, and we're going to ride the hot hand. I have a prop that I absolutely love. Uh, someone had that, said they heard me typing, and I haven't typed anything yet. I was, I was typing. Well, stop typing. I was answering somebody in the chat. Okay. Well, how do we how do we avoid that? What do we just got to mute before we type? That could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I have I the do Apple. Do Dude, I'm, I'm juggling yeah. so many fucking audio devices right now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you're trying to get everything done. It's first show, first show jinx. Don't we'll worry. fix it. We'll fix it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Evan will take care of it. I promise you. So uh, I have a prop that I love, and again, I haven't dug into the props a ton yet. Ghost, do you have one that you wanted to talk about? I, I could talk about one real quick. Yeah, do that uh, first, and then I'll go to mine. So I'm very big on the Washington football team this year. I love McLaurin. I love Gibson. I love the fact that they brought in uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, that defense is going to be top five, definitely, if not top three in the league. Top one. Uh, yeah, I've been drafting them in every season-long league. Looking at Antonio Gibson only at, what is it, 13 and a half, 12 and a half rush yards this week, I think that's good. very low compared to where they were last year. If you look back, he doesn't have – many games where he hit that total, but you got to remember that team was playing from behind a lot. They had abandoned the run game a lot. I think they're going to be in a lot more games and he's going to see the ball extremely well this year. So that 13 and a half rush, uh, rushing attempts for me is something I'm going to be taking this Sunday. All right. I don't mind that at all. I like that. Um, the first thing that jumped off the page for me, and I said last night, me and Bill were both on the same page with Schultz. Um, when people asked us in the pregame show, because we put out Schultz at 17 and a half, and then the whole chat bet it. Uh, we have over a thousand subscribers. So obviously that's going to move a line when people start hammering the same obscure prop. It jumped to 18 and a half. And everyone was like, do you still like it? Uh, my two favorite plays were Godwin and Schultz. Bill was all over Schultz too. Uh, I projected Schultz for 40 last night. I said that line is 10 yards off on what the prop should be. It was 17 and a half. It should have been like 28. Uh, that would have been a fair number that we still would have bet at 28 there's a prop this weekend and i've only looked at like 20 props i just wanted to get one for the show and it popped right out tyrod taylor who's going to be the starting quarterback for the terrible houston texans uh obviously we know the jaguars have a pretty good uh pretty good situation on the front right where they should be able to put some pressure on him his rushing total is over 16 and a half yards so i think that's bordering on egregious i think that should be 30 or 28 I think he's going to be running like crazy. If you go back to 2018, which was pretty much his last full season, here are his rushing totals. 38, 55, 13, 12, 3, 30, 53, 1, 35, 27, 38, 27, 32, 42, 16, 35, 27. Uh, and two of the three games the next year, he had 35 plus. I think 16 and a half in a spot like this, where it's kind of a new offense, probably not going to have great timing, doesn't have a lot of talent around him. Uh, going to have a pretty strong pass rush, going to be wanting to play for this job. He wants to make sure that he can put a, put a stranglehold on this thing. I don't see any chance he isn't running like crazy. I think Tyrod Taylor hits that in the first half, that 16 and a half. I think it's way too low. What do you guys think? Tommy, can you see me? Uh, I prefer not to, but let me see. I can't see you guys at all. I, I can see you. We can see you. Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, I know. I can't see. I don't know what happens. Just disappeared. It's all right. We can still hear you, and we can see you on the show, so you're good. All right. Uh, what do you, I don't know how much they're going to be able to move the ball. Um, 
outside of them, they got who do they have in the backfield? David Johnson and um, no, but they got a bunch. They got Ingram, David Johnson. They got a bunch of old grizzled vets. They got like fifteen guys back there. Yeah, yeah, I could see that hitting easily. They, it's going to be too much pressure. He's going to have to move. That team's going to struggle all year, and it's going to fall on him. So, uh, I like it. Yeah, I just, I just think they're going to, they're going to be frantic the whole game. And when you're in a frantic offense, it only takes one run. I mean, Dak Prescott coming off fucking. 17 different injuries beat the rushing total that Bill had last night. So, Bill, what do you think of Tyrod now? Uh, I think I think it's a great play. I mean, I haven't really uh, researched it enough. Um, I will do that more on Saturday night when I do my full, my total uh, research. But from what you guys are saying, uh, I agree. Yeah, we have uh, – just so you guys know, if you're in the 4D Bets Discord, we basically uh, – the whole night before, we just sit in there and talk about the bets that we're going to make Saturday night usually. We're usually drunk after college football, and we just go in there and run through all the possible bets. Believe it or not, some of the best bets we get are actually from the subscribers. So uh, a lot of the subscribers in there give a shit, and they're just asking questions, and they end up finding shit that we're like, holy crap, you know, that's that's a pretty good bet. So uh, I will say this, in Tyrod's uh, last game, he was six for nine, and he did have one rush for six yards and very limited action, so. Uh, I'm big on that prop right there. As far as sides for this weekend, guys, what do you guys like for sides? Anything that, that you're looking at? I have a couple plays that I like. I think Ghost, you're going to be on one of them with me. But any NFL sides that are jumping out the page off the page early? I haven't looked into Sunday yet because unlike the rest of the chat, I'm still focused on baseball. I've been destroying baseball, especially the team totals and the alt team totals. So I'm still staying focused on that. I'll start looking at Sunday's plays probably tomorrow during college. Um, uh, nothing that stands out right now, but I'm sure the one that you're talking about will be something I'll be on. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm on the Redskins minus 120 in this game. Uh, I don't like laying points, as everyone knows. I love how people try to come out and tell us how we should bet. It's my favorite thing when I'm up fucking 600 units in baseball right now, literally hitting 70% of my max bets with an average line of minus 120. But uh, everyone on Twitter wants to tell you how to fucking bet. I have two bets that I love. I love the Patriots minus 170. No problem laying 170, staying off the three points. We lay 170 in baseball games every fucking day. Why would I be afraid of it in football? So I love the Patriots minus 170 because I hate fucking Tua. uh, And I think he's going to kill that team. And I love Mac Jones and the Patriots this year. And I love the Redskins in this game, Bill. That's one of my favorite plays of the weekend. Uh, The Redskins money line here against the Chargers. It's not that I don't like the Chargers. It's just the Redskins at home. That defense is nasty. Uh, outside of Tampa, defense usually tends to be a step ahead of offense to start the season when things are rusty. So I think this Washington defense is going to give the Chargers uh, some fits with a very limited preseason for their starters. Yeah, they're my favorite defense. Uh, I love them. They're nasty. Um, you know, and then I love Fitzpatrick. How can you not? Uh, I don't he's... think the, the Chargers are going to be as good as everyone thinks they are this year. Everyone's been buying into Herbert and the past I agree. game. And... And big on Eckler this year. And I think it's going to bite a lot of people in the ass. Um, I think Eckler is going to be a disappointment, especially if you drafted him first round in fantasy. I don't think Herbert's going to – you had a rookie quarterback setting records for pass attempts in a season. I, I don't see how that's going to hold up this year. Um, I, I think they're going to fall flat. I do like the, the Redskins one. And just looking at it quick, the other game that I, I just on paper – Seeing Seattle only minus 150, I, I think that's a game that we're going to have to look at on Sunday as well. I haven't dug into that one yet. It's like I kind of like jumped at a few of the main ones, Bill. I don't know if you've looked into the Seattle game at all yet. I'm not, not – I can't say I'm on it or off it right now because I yeah, haven't really no. dug into it yet. Same with me. Um, I don't know. That team just seems like a, a mess right now. There's a lot of injury, a lot of concern, and we all know what Russ does. We, we know he fell off a little bit in the middle of the season, but – to get an elite quarterback like that going into Indy, you know that's that's definitely a game I'll be I'll be watching. Yeah, I get a little concerned with road teams at the beginning of the year, so that's why I tend to, to jump off it a little bit. Another thing about that Washington game, you do have to realize that you do have the Chargers going pretty much one of the furthest trips that you can make in the NFL, flying west to east, going from from LA all the way to Washington. So. Uh, that's another advantage there for the uh, Washington Redskins, which I will never, ever, fucking, ever refer to as the football team. It's 2021, um, bro. I yeah. have fuck that. I have somebody 
I have someone vigorously, vigorously knocking on my door and ringing the doorbell upstairs. I don't know what's going on. The, the FBI, someone is going insane. I have to go upstairs and find out who this is. Go do it. Go see what it is. It's, they probably found out you're doing a show with Tommy G. Now the fucking feds are coming after him. Uh, so anything for you, Evan? Any, anything you looked at that you liked this weekend? I want to know what we think about the Ravens running back situation right now because apparently they're practicing on fucking concrete. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know what to do with this. I did pick up Lat Murray in another league Me when too. he wasn't drafted. Mm -hmm. um, I did pick up uh, Devontae Freeman in a league, used some fab money on that. I have no interest in Le'Veon Bell. I feel like he's washed and just trash. Definitely but, washed. Uh, I personally think uh, the Lat Murray thing was pretty obvious. Everyone knew that was coming. I would not be surprised being the stable of running backs that the Houston Texans have that they literally have no fucking need for. That team's going nowhere. I wow. mean, it's, eh, what was it? What was it? Bro, again, FEMA. 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 The lady's going nuts. Doorbell hanging on the door. <laughs> What's oh up? God. What's going on? What did she want? What's the problem? Oh, I, I didn't know if anyone was... Oh, what do you mean you don't know if anyone... I'm doing something. She's like, yeah... Um, I'm like, didn't you just come here the other day? She's like, yeah, I do recognize you. I said, okay, I told you I had four Picassos that flooded, and you started laughing. <laughs> what? What's the problem here? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sir, am I bothering you? I mean, can you tell you're bothering me? <laughs> I just slammed the door. I mean, like, come on. <laughs> but you should have heard it. I didn't know what was going on. Well, at least you got a job. Oh, holy Christ. <laughs> Bro, yeah, exactly. Good point. Good point. It was like this. <laughs> or about like ding 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 like the buzzer I'm like holy Christ what's going on up there dude you should you missed the uh, for those of you that aren't subscribers yet I don't know what you're doing but uh, Bill Rupp basically has a catastrophe every night uh, especially when it rains or snows because he has he owns many rental properties and stuff so he was shoveling shit out of a rental property one day then the next day his own basement flooded when we had the hurricane here oh. well I just sit up in my concrete palace and don't worry about anything. We we have uh, rough dates, as we call I was it. Saving. Bill, everything. how many times did Tommy ask to come and help you? None. Never. <laughs> None. Never. I moved, I moved that motherfucker, but I moved him. I moved <clears throat> him. We were dying, dying. I moved him. Forty years old. I'm picking up mattresses. We're picking up. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's only going to take like a couple hours. There's a few things. By 3.30 in the afternoon, I was dead. I said, oh, I can't do anymore. My legs, I can't move. We finished at 3.30 in the morning. Well, then I had to take the truck back to my house. I told him, we're not unloading. I'm not doing it. I'm done. I'm sorry. You dropped, the, you dropped the truck off at my house when I got locked out? Yeah, I do everything for him. Yeah, yeah. and I do nothing in return. I'm about to record uh, No Mercy at 5.30. It's 5 o'clock. Do you have a folding chair? Can you come? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got one. It's in the car. You know, I go get it. He's, uh, he's like, well, can you bring it by? I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't come. It starts at 5.30. Uh. So I had to go bring him a folding chair. Does nothing. I'm drowning. I'm yelling, Jenna, save yourself. My dog, she's jumping up on the couch, <laughs> floating away down here. And Tommy's just laughing. He's like, go, go, go in, go in Discord. Tell everybody what's happening. Go in Discord. Yeah, all I cared about was that he was reporting live in the Discord so that we could fucking laugh at him. I'm dying. I'm trying to save the toilet paper and everything over here. <laughs> fucking toilet paper. To finish the question, E, I have a fairly bold prediction. I mean, Bill, we talked about this a little bit with the Texans the other day. I mean, they have Scotty Phillips, Mark Ingram, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay, Rex Burkhead. I mean, they got a million fucking backs on that team. It looks like their running back core looks like the dude in your league who went zero running back theory in like 2018 and just drafted all the second tier backs for every team. Uh, but they don't need David Johnson. Like, there's no way. They got to be wanting to trade him. They could probably get something for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see David Johnson get traded to the Ravens at some point. Uh, they take a shot on that, and uh, Houston walks away with a pick or two for it. Probably nothing that significant, yeah. and uh, and that's 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 what would make sense to me at least. Also, this weekend I'm loving Terry McLaurin with uh, the football team Redskins putting Curtis Samuel on the IR today. I mean that dude's going to get a lot of targets. Yeah, McLaurin's huge. Bill, we made a lot of money off him last year. Oh my god. Yeah, we just one fucking. Call I posted for before the season on Ruffin Rackets the other day, McLaurin over. 
was that, 1,200 yards? Yep. Yeah. 1,200.5, I believe, if I'm right. Oh, that's the Samuel thing's only going to help that. So, uh, well, so yeah. You ask in chat, they asked how we feel about Stafford. Um, if you guys have been in Discord with us, if you've been with us the last few days, Stafford is a guy that I love almost more than anybody. I think he's going to be a, possibly a top six quarterback. Looking at the wide receiver props this week, they have Woods and Cup at only 63 and a half. I, I could see both both receivers putting up 100 plus this week with him behind behind center. So. I, I don't. I don't hate that. And, and here's the thing, Ghost and Bill. You know we do this a lot. Last night when I was putting in those those player prop parlays, right? Like whenever I see a lot of same game parlays on the internet, it's always like four or five things, right? To get plus nine hundred, plus a thousand. Me and Bill were having a conversation with Ghost last night in the Discord, where it's like the one that hit for plus twenty five hundred for us last night. We put two tenths of a unit on it, right? Like it's a small stab, but I threw in Godwin to get a hundred yards and Schultz to get forty, like. That's not hard, right? Like for Godwin to get 100 yards and Schultz to get 40 if we love Schultz is over 17 and a half. And it paid plus 2,500. Like when you're looking at these same game parlays, what you're just saying there goes with Cup uh, and that situation in St. Louis, I would do Cup and another play you love, maybe Kyler Murray plus 300 to score a rushing touchdown, right? Something that has some nice juice on it that's realistic. If you went out right now and did Cup for 100 yards, and Murray to score a rushing touchdown, I guarantee you that's a plus 2,000 play. And then you do the same exact play with Murray and Woods because the chances of one of those two guys going over 100 with how much we all do like Stafford is pretty high. I mean, it's not going to be crazy if either of them go for 100, and you're getting plus 2,000. So these are a lot of the bets that we like to do that uh, I think people stay away from because they're too busy piling in 10 favorites where if you take a couple plus 300s, I mean, it's fucking gold. I got one bet that I really like um, besides Kansas City Chiefs that's already a part of my last uh, part of my parlay that I have a max bet on, which was Sabalenka, Tampa Bay, and the Chiefs. Um, so the Chiefs, I love them to win. I love the Jaguars. Tommy doesn't agree. Um, love the Jaguars. The Texans are the worst team in football. I actually bet on them uh, on Robin Rackets to go 0-17. Um, I bet them to have the worst record in football, and I bet them to go wins under four and a half games. So I love the Jaguars. I will be taking them in one of my survivor picks. I have three on DraftKings, so one is definitely getting used on that. I mean, get rid of them now. Why not? Um, I think they're going to win that game. I think they're a better team. Uh, Texans are god-awful, and uh, let's see what happens. So we've been arguing about this. Uh, everyone knows, even Bill Ruff, who hates me to his core, will admit, Bill, am I not the greatest Survivor player in the history of Survivor? I hate to admit it. Uh, when Ghost was asking, guys, who wants to give out Survivor picks? And I'll take you up on that. Me yeah, and Rackett right. texted right away, we're following Tommy. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Ghost wasn't here last football season, so I don't know how his Survivor picks are, so I can't. I can tell you how it is. It's basically like comparing anyone to Michael Jordan. Well, uh, the only thing I was a little it was a little strange is Ghost is giving out three picks. Yeah, and he's already uh, cheating. You saw this Ghost. What was that? I don't understand. What that. is what? Your spreadsheet has three spots. Well, because I am I have one pool that I buy three entries in. So what right. I'm going to do? I, listen, is, I get that. Well, what happens for the subscriber who yeah, only has that's one? That's not how this works. One fucking pick. Why? What happens if he only has one entry? What does he then do? They pick the, then they pick the top one. They pick the route that they want to follow. I'm putting my angle. You, but you have three. Listen, it's a survivor pool. So whether somebody buys one entry in or they buy three entries in, I'm giving them all three of my entries that they can follow how I'm going to be playing it week by week. And if they only have one entry, they follow one of my... my um. Are you going to rank them in order at least? Yes. Okay. So... It says one, two, three. Because do you really feel that you could beat me in a survivor pool? I really do, considering the last three years I've cashed in every pool that I've been in. I've been yeah. top eight, top five, top three. So. Okay, was, there's only one in a survivor pool, so I don't yeah. know what kind of... I don't know. Again, what, what is that? You win it or you don't. I can't. <laughs> only one person... Never, you've never cashed money out of a survivor pool? No. I win. I win them all the time, every year. With I mean, unless there's five people left and you decide to split the pot. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in pools where there have been five people left with 40 grand in the pot, so people will say, all right, let's take a grand or two out and play for the rest. 
I'm the asshole who doesn't split. <laughs> I'm always that problem in the chat. I'm, I'm with you. I wouldn't split either. I never I mean, split. I'm like, let's go to nothing. Yeah. The guy, the hedge artist of our company, yeah. would not be willing to take a profit out and still play for $30,000. I find that hard to believe. You got a point, Bill. He's talking about you. I mean... I, I, you know what? I can't say you're right, Ghost. I mean, then I've again, never you, you'd have to make it that far to be in that situation. This is my, was my point. I've never gotten there, so I can't. <laughs> I mean, and I'm going to have to let you know I'm following Tommy for the first time this year. So this, is, have to, this is what Bill does every year, Ghost. This has been like a three year trend. He gets into Survivor Bowl, doesn't listen to me, takes chalk early, then chalk loses, the whole league gets wiped out, and it's like me and 12 other guys left, right, who stayed off the fucking minus 500. And then he starts bidding on my Survivor team. Yeah. But then he starts making me offers to buy into my survivor. Yeah. yeah. And then as I turn them down every week, he lowers the offer. Oh, yeah. No, if like, as it's a problem. higher probability play, he lowers his. I think he's going to be one of the worst picks in the history of the NFL draft. I think we're going to be looking at him along the lines of fucking Jamarcus Russell in five, ten years. He's just garbage. He sucked at Clemson. He was overrated. He couldn't read a defense. Every time he had to play an elite team, he got exposed. I don't like him at all. So to take him in his first start scares the shit out of me, even though I do think Jacksonville is a better team than the Texans. So I'm going to take a little more of a known commodity in the San Francisco 49ers going against who, if not the worst, is probably the second worst team in the NFL in Detroit. I got a team that is a minus 350 favorite. And when you look, the big thing for me is people make this mistake in survivor pools. They don't look down the line, right? They just draft for this week. So when I look at this down the line, and I look at San Fran, I go, when am I going to need to use them again? Well, they play Houston at one point at home this year, but that's week 17. I'm not prepping for week 17 and week one. So they got Detroit this week, and then it's Phil at Philadelphia, not taking them. Green Bay, not taking them. Seattle, not taking them. Arizona, not taking them. Indy, not taking them. At Chicago, not taking them. Arizona, no. Rams, no. At Jacksonville, probably not, depending on how Jacksonville is. But the first time I would have to even have a thought process is week 11 at Jacksonville. So I'm going to burn San Francisco right now. I'm going to get them out of the way. I don't think they're going to be elite. I think uh, Trey Lance will be in there by midseason. He's going to be erratic because he's young, so it's not going to be a team you're going to want to put your survivor life on. So I'm going to take the minus 350 favorite in a game in Detroit against a fucking horrific team, and I think it's just a far better play than Jacksonville where I don't know what I'm going to get from Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I think I'm going to be in the same boat as you. There are only two teams that I'm really looking at this first week. I th Like I said, I, I have three entries. So two of them I think are going to be spent on the 49ers. And then my one chalk pick for the week, I think I'm going to be locking in the Ravens um, on the road against the Raiders. So those will be my two, two teams out of the three picks. Um, interesting thought, though. Somebody brought up to me yesterday, and this goes for survivor strategy. It won't work now, but for future years. My cousin said to me, if you're in a pool where you have up until Sunday to buy an entry, why aren't you taking, and, and you have the money to spend, why aren't you taking that Thursday game the first week? You have a, basically a no-lose situation where if you happen to get knocked out, you just rebuy a new entry for Sunday, whereas now if you win on, sun, on Thursday, you're locked in. And you don't have to worry about for the rest of the week. Most yeah. pools that I am in, I think uh, actually everyone that I'm in, you can't use the Thursday night. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you can in some of the ones I'm in. I just, I mean, I'm going to buy the max entries that I could buy because most of my league are like yours, Ghost. They're three entry max. So I'm just going to go get the three and, you know, play it that way regardless. But it's not a bad strategy for someone who's looking to save some money and buy one. Uh, I will tell you guys this. Make sure you smash the subscribe button right now. Go to our channel. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, go smash that at the bottom. Go give it a like. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. Do that every show. We appreciate it. It helps us move up the YouTube rankings. Makes Evan's life a lot easier uh, for SEO and things like that. So make sure you always go in there. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. And then tell your friends. So anything you guys could do. We've been deleted from the Internet left and right. Uh, you guys are our marketing arm. We just broke a sales record for the last month. A lot of that having to do with you know how much work we're putting in. But, you know, great performance, and really, you guys, telling your friends and retweeting and commenting, we really appreciate it. Oh, my it. God, did you see who's in chat right now? Who's that? <laughs> Joey Vam enters the chat, I just okay. say. So, so, guys, uh, um, thank God he's having hot flashes. He's sweating. Let me, uh, let me, I just want to, uh, Rackets had texted me, 
and the match starts at 3 o'clock. He wants to give it out. He loves uh, Medvedev. Uh, exact exact set score, 3-1, three, three to one, plus 240. Starts at 3 o'clock. That's in five minutes. Um, everyone get that in. Okay. Um, we do have Djokovic, too, minus 260 today at 7 p.m. Medvedev, minus 650. Uh, and then Layla and Emma tomorrow at 11 a.m. Me and Bill may actually be going to the U.S. Open tomorrow. But uh, I've been absolutely white hot with the ladies in the tennis with Emma and Layla. I've hit them every single match at plus 300, plus 200. So they're playing each other. I probably won't have a play on it uh, outside of maybe o and over on that. But if anything, I would go with Layla plus 150. But Rackets is our tennis handicapper and our two-touchdown expert. He likes Medvedev 3-1. to one. Uh, I like that, too, actually. I'm a little worried about Djokovic later tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Zverev beats him. Uh, Rackets were saying, too, Zverev's the hottest player in the country right now. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, the running back situation we talked about, let's give a baseball bet or two. I hate the baseball slate tonight, guys. I'm just telling you that right out the gate. It's horrible. Uh, terrible matchups. Just bad situation. The Rays minus 150 against Detroit. Pretty much I just pop the Rays every time they're under 200 especially against a bad team, even though I don't like Waka. The one thing I do like, we've hit the max bet on Yankees games uh, pretty much almost every day outside of getting screwed with Voight last night with the late-inning home run. I like both pitchers in this, Montgomery and uh, my boy McGill. So I'm going to do no runs in the second inning in the Yankees-Mets game. When I do no runs, I like to go second inning, no runs. You avoid the top four hitters on each team. If the first inning gets a little long, being that's in an NL park, you actually might get the pitcher, too, in the second inning, possibly, if it's a long first. But I like no runs in the second inning for the Yankees-Mets game. That's probably going to be one of my favorite plays of the day. Bill, any baseball bets for tonight? Um, I like Tampa Bay. The only thing that scares me is Waka, again. Um, I don't, you know, Otani pitching against the Astros. Um, the rest of the games I really don't have a great feel on. Not a good uh, And the baseball slate has been very bad. The Reds are free-falling, just like the Yankees. How can you bet on them? Um, White Sox, the White Sox Red Sox game I wouldn't touch yeah. and the rest of them maybe the Braves but it's a big money line um, Ghost probably has a few things he loves tonight he loves uh, he loves this baseball slate yeah so Tampa like you guys said but like I mentioned before it's team totals have been a thing for me that we've been smashing left and right so the Rays team total will be one that I'm looking at and the Reds just going up against Lester on the mound and um mm -hmm. I think the wind is going to play a factor in that game. That will be one game that I'll be looking at. You love picking on little Lester over there, don't you? Yeah. Burned us last time, but He's a nightmare. He's a nightmare, that Lester. I don't fuck with him. Uh, I do agree with Bill here. I like Rodgers. That's the only reason I'm off Atlanta. I think he's a good pitcher. I don't like to go against him. But I will say this. Toronto is obviously a great bet uh, at Baltimore today with Ray on the mound, but it's minus 300. So if you want to do something, we just did a double max bet, our first one of the season with a few games over a three-day span that closed with the Bucks last night, thankfully. Um, I wouldn't mind the Blue Jays and the Chiefs. If you take the Blue Jays minus 300 tonight, and then you go with the Chiefs uh, this weekend, I think Bill likes the Chiefs, I like the Chiefs. We're kind of low on the Browns as usual. Uh, you could probably get that for pretty much even money, that, uh, that bet right there. So, Bill, you like that? Oh, I love it. I was just about to say the exact same thing. Yeah. I was actually minus. going to look what the odds were on my yeah. – Minus 117. Yeah, it comes out. Well, minus 123 on MGM. So, yeah. In fact, 117 on FanDuel. So, you're right in that ballpark, minus 120. So. It's a great bet. Yeah. So, let's do that. Let's do the Rays and the Chiefs. That'll be a max bet uh, on the site today. And I'm excited to get into digging for this weekend. So, we didn't really get to Cam Newton. Let's take one second and just all three of you guys give me a take on Cam Newton's comments about, uh, who knows what the fuck he's saying, referring to himself in the third person. Uh, I'm talking to this guy since Sirius XM days goes, do you remember? I d predicted the demise guy, of Cam Newton forever. That guy can go fuck himself. There is no football player I hate more than him. He's the biggest pussy I've ever watched play. He's the biggest bitch I've ever watched play. <laughs> I will never waste another time or dollar on that piece of shit. I would, dude, for some reason, I just envisioned Cam Newton knocking on his window in the car, just happening. <laughs> <laughs> with his stupid yeah. hair coming out the top of his oh hat. <laughs> that, that interview he set up with his father was insane. I mean, he just, like, thought he was going to get kicked out anyway. He said that uh, a Cam Newton can't survive in a locker room. A Cam Newton 
will be too much of a distraction as a backup. A Cam Newton is the focal point of the team. He said he would have stayed as a backup, which I don't believe. But he said a Cam Newton. He said a Cam, a Cam Newton like five times. Um, I don't believe they had anything to do with the COVID. I just think they wanted him out. I don't know why. I don't know what what New England was doing. Tommy made a good point before. I'll let him tell his point. But this could have been set up. Um, mm -hmm. Only thing that doesn't make sense to me: Why did they start him all three preseason games? It made no sense. If they knew that they were going to get rid of him and after the second preseason game. Why start him that last game? But, Tommy, go ahead. Tell him, everyone, you're a little... Yeah, theory. my conspiracy theory on the Cam Newton thing, I said before the season, there's no way Cam Newton is the starter, even after they announced him as the starter. So there's no fucking way Bill Belichick's that stupid to get his guy and then start with Cam Newton, because then the only way Mac Jones can come in is if Cam Newton struggles, and then you're bringing Mac Jones into a one and free team, and you blew your whole fucking season. He's not that stupid coming off a bad year last year, watching Brady win the Super Bowl. So I think this was all either they were calling teams behind the scenes and they wanted to showcase him a little bit in the preseason and put him in good positions, see if they can get any type of trade offer and kept it on the DL because nothing leaks out of New England. The other thing I think is that they waited until the last minute to cut him so that no one else can take him. So that way they don't have to worry about another team grabbing them, moving them in and learning the offense. There was rumors, Evan, that fucking Matt, not even rumors, this is a fact. This is from Ninkovich, uh, who played for the Patriots. Mac Jones was teaching Cam Newton the offense. <laughs> and Cam Newton had been there for a year and a half. So this motherfucker ain't going anywhere and plugging in seamlessly because he's brain dead. Hey, what's your take on Cam Newton before we get out of here? Red flag number one is the way he just types all of his Instagram captions. <laughs> I mean, that's got to take him five hours to do. That, like, he's done that his entire NFL career. I don't know how, like, that, that must just take forever. I mean, I love the guy during his MVP season, but he's just obviously straight downhill. But I think Belichick had a bigger plan. He's got something up his sleeve. So watch out yeah. for Mac Jones. Tommy, like you said, he won't – he's not going to go to a playoff team where the quarterback is down because then he's not going to learn their offense. He he needs to go somewhere where they can plug and play and he could be the offense. And he yeah. can dictate the, he's not going to learn the book. He's so he'd have to go somewhere where they just want, you know, people to come and watch him or somewhere where the coach is going to say, okay, we're still in this, but Cam, do what you got to do. I mean, I honestly think the best fit for him would be to go to Baltimore, right? I mean, if he wants to try and win a – I mean, he's got to go somewhere with a run first offense. It's just play a backup role. Be some place where they could just plug in if need be. But, I mean, he's got to have a two times better Cam Newton. They don't need him to do any of that. That's yeah, true. well, if he's hurt, I'm not saying to start. Send him to you think, I think he's going to start over him. Lamar Jackson, you fucking No, idiot. you said as a backup. What is he going to do there? They don't need to sub him in for anything. Let him fucking Sit there as a backup in case Lamar gets hurt. Let him rot in Houston. He's a piece of shit. He'll always be a piece of shit. He's <laughs> done. He's done. Get him out of the fucking league. <laughs> He's out of the now, so. I would love to get him out of the league. That's why, he that, that's why yeah. he did that video with his father, just to get people interested and start talking about him again. That's it. Yeah. No one's going to shit about him. He'll be pioneering with Cop Colin Kaepernick across the uh, social justice streets very shortly. But, uh, yeah, no, Ghost, I was saying as a backup, not as a starter. They got, what, RG3 back there? He's, he's, at least, he's at least better than RG3. I mean, you put you, he'll go there. He'll keep his fucking mouth shut because he's got a shot at the Super Bowl. And you can plug him into a quarterback run first offense. I'm a big Ravens fan. I want him nowhere near that team. Okay, there's the bias. There's where the answer comes out. All right, guys, get over to 4deepbets.com. Number 4deepbets.com. This show is going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Friday, we're going to give you a bunch of stuff going into the weekend. All the real picks and the gangster picks will be taking place in the chat room. Monday, we'll come in, recap the whole weekend, what we saw, give you some Monday night bets. And then on Wednesday, we'll have the midweek show where we'll talk about the Thursday night football game. So that's going to be the, the schedule going forward for now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Follow us all on Twitter. You can see the links below. Evan, great job getting that up during the show. Uh, for Night Ghost, for Bill, for Evan, for Healy, and everyone else on the staff who will be joining us throughout the year, I am Tommy G. 